ask for a light beer. Hey, can I have a light? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Uh, no, a uh, butt light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Opa! Ask them to bring out their best. Bruce Stan is their home field as they play Iowa today. But, Merlin Olson, when you listen to the crowd noise, you would think you were in Iowa City. Got a lot of those Hawkeye fans here, and I remember when they were here before, and a very sad day for them. They made a lot of noise. They stayed all the way through that 28 to nothing drubbing, and they had an impact on the game. I was glad to have their folks here, too. Speaking of having your folks together, UCLA starts with a handicap, or at least some would think that. David Norrie, for their primary starter throughout the course of the year at quarterback, is injured. It's a thigh injury. He will be replaced as the starter today by Matt Stevens, who started only one game all year. Dick, the major impact of that change is that you're taking out of the lineup the man who really is probably more responsible than any other player on that UCLA roster for getting them here to the Rose Bowl. It's experience that you lose. Stevens is, is a fine Stevens is a fine quarterback, but he hasn't taken the snaps. He hasn't had the experience of hitting those receivers, reading the defenses during this season like Norrie has. Well, Terry Donahue, the coach of the Bruins, has a lot of confidence in Stevens. He's not very tall. He's about 5'11". That's about a half foot shorter than Norrie. But the players say that Stevens has a stronger arm than Norrie. Now, as a defensive lineman, you know the other team in a big game is starting a new quarterback. What goes through your mind? Well, you like that because that frees you up to get more aggressive. You're going to see more blitzes. You're going to see a lot of defenses dancing back and forth. They want to force him to read the defenses. I think it does give an advantage to the defense in that situation. Well, Iowa, on the other hand, has the All-America quarterback this year in Chuck Long, who has had a sensational season, has broken all the Iowa records, most of the Big Ten marks. Dick, they not only throw the football well, but they can come right back at you then and hit you up the middle with David Hudson. They can throw Ronnie Harmon at you. The scary thing about this Iowa defense is their incredible balance. Who in the world are you going to stop first? You're going to stop their All-American quarterback or the two great running backs? Well, as a defensive uh, player, then what do you think will be Donahue's game plan? I think he's got to try and, and force Long, get after Long, pressure on Long. I think that's number one. Well, the two teams are ready to come on the field. We'll have that dramatic moment from Pasadena, California. Iowa, UCLA, ready to go. Fuel-injected Dodge Lancers come with optional turbo. Rye grass, and we've never seen the floor of the Rose Bowl in better condition. Now let's go in that direction to Bill McAtee. All right, Dick, I spoke with David Norrie a few moments ago, the UCLA quarterback. He said his leg feels a lot better today, and he says he does expect to play. He says it doesn't bother him too much when he goes down the line as he would in an option or as a scrambling quarterback in the backfield. But he says it does bother him when he goes flat out. We'll see, and he also says he expects UCLA to open up with a short pass. Back up there. So the Bruins are first on the field. And Terry Donahue, their 41-year-old coach, 1985 was a good year for him. He became the winningest coach in UCLA football history. And back in the Rose Bowl. He has been here as a player, an assistant coach, and a head coach, and now the Hawkeyes of Hayden Fry are ready to take the field. And you'll hear a mighty roar from those clad in yellow and black. And as you look over this giant oval, those Hawkeye fans are everywhere. They expect something like 25,000 here from the state of Iowa, those who graduated from that fine institution. feel the energy those those youngsters want to get out of that field Dick they'll turn them loose in a minute Perky their mascot ready to choreograph the entrance and here comes look Hayden. out here they come Six years of age. We told you Donahue is the winningest coach in UCLA history. At this moment, Hayden Fry is tied as the Hawkeyes' all-time winning coach with the great Forrest Evashevsky, who took two, two Iowa teams to Rose Bowl wins in 57 and 59. The captains are at midfield for the toss of the coin. 
the toss with the burrow and kick it. Iowa defers and kicks the ball away. They want their defense on the field first. An interesting choice by Hayden Fry. Perhaps uh, with Matt Stevens starting and not having that experience, they're going to put the pressure on the quarterback Stevens right from the opening bell. Frederick Johnson III, the son of the Tournament of Roses president, was involved in the flip of the coin. That brings back some fond memories for you, Merlin Olson. Sure does. My son Nathan got a chance to do that to the year I was the Grand Marshal. I think one of the most exciting moments of his life. And for these two gentlemen, the pressures in part of a regular season are all forgotten. They've done that part of the job. And now Hayden Fry says, I, last time I was just happy to get to the Rose Bowl. I'm not a happy man yet. One of the things he's done is to put his team on a very strict regiment out here. They have missed a lot of the fun of this trip, and they have concentrated on football. They want to win this football game. They really feel they have a mission here representing the Big Ten. UCLA, UCLA on the other uh, hand, open and easy. Donahue just kind of relaxed. We'll see how those two differing styles have affected the performance of these teams today. A major difference in the makeup of the two teams. This is a very experienced Iowa team. Senior dominated. It's a young, comparatively, UCLA club. First 13 games, it was all Big Ten. People wondered if it was a mistake getting these two conferences together. Big Ten, 12 out of 13. Now it has turned around, and the Big Ten fans are hungry for a win as the Pac-10 has lost only one of the last 11. Dick, as I watch, that's Houtland, uh, Rob Houtland teeing that ball up. He hasn't kicked off since the end of the third game of the season. They scored so many points, he had to kick so much in those first three games that he strained the muscle in his leg. He's now back, he's healthy, he's gonna kick it off. Darrell Henley and Danny Thompson are deep for UCLA. Houtland kicking, Mark Cook had done much of the kickoff duties in the latter half of the year for the Hawkeyes. These fans on their feet and uh, another dramatic delay. Iowa's only loss to Ohio State in Columbus, 22-13. UCLA opening its campaign by knocking off defending champion BYU, 27-24. And it was Matt Stevens off the bench in relief of David Noy, who won it for UCLA. We're underway for the 72nd time. A 33-yard return. Here's the offense for the UCLA Bruins. David Noy, number nine, will not start. Matt Stevens, a junior, will. He's a quarterback. We threw only 41 passes this year. Gaston Green, the leading rusher, and a good one. And Melfar Jr. are the running backs. The wide receivers, they're fleet, and they're all capable of getting the long ball. Mike Sherrard, the all-time record holder. Carl Durrell caught two touchdowns, the last Rose Bowl, and Derek Tonell is the tight end. Stevens, the throw in his first play, has a man open. It's far. And that's a name, an All-American name. UCLA history, Mel Farr Jr. has almost a first down. It's a 9 or 10 yard game. Here are the men in front of Matt Stevens. Starting from right tackle, John Kidder, 265 pounds. Jim McCullough, his 33rd consecutive start, weighs 262. Goble at 260 pounds at center. Mike Hartmeyer, all pack 10 at 265. And the left tackle is Robert Cox, a little guy, 258. They'll measure for the first down. Tom Quinn, a Big Ten official, with the honor today. He in the white hat, and it's that far shy of a first down. Quinn, Coyne, Meese, Gallagher, Sherlock, Dorkowski, Armstead, Stewart, the men honored from the Big Ten and Pac-10, and indeed it's all of that. We talked to them yesterday, and they're as thrilled as the players. To be Their here. eyes were bright and shining, weren't they? Just short of that first down, they measured it. They'll take the uh, sticks back to the sideline. Interesting that UCLA would start with a pass. We expect them to rely most heavily on the running game today. It's really been the strength of their offensive football during this season. 
His fifth start is his biggest. A man recruited by Hayden Fry. He wanted him at Iowa, but Stephen said he did not want to leave Southern California, and he has the first down, wedging straight ahead to the 41-yard line. The Hawkeyes defensively, and this is a good defensive team in the top five in the nation. Bruce Gear at one end. They have a five-man front. John Breeze and Iowanas are the three men in the middle of the line. Hap Peterson, an all-Big Ten nose guard. Jeff Drost is their best pass rusher, nine sacks this year. Richard Pryor, no relation to the comedian, is at left end. In fact, he doesn't even talk. <laughs> First down from the 41. Play action in trouble, Stevens, but he's able to get away from Drost, but not able to elude John Breeze, the right tackle. Six-yard deficit as Breeze, a junior from Forest City, Iowa, has the sack. The rest of the Iowa defense, there's an All-American number 36, Larry Station from Omaha, Nebraska, and George Davis Tuff from Des Moines. We'll check the back four for Iowa in a moment. It is second down and 16. is able to pick up the miscue from Gaston Green. The exchange was not a healthy one, and that was to be expected. That's something that can happen when you have a quarterback who hasn't had that many snaps during a lot of part of the season. The defensive backfield for the Hawkeyes. Let's meet them. Nate Greer at the right corner from Brooklyn, New York. Devon Mitchell from the same high school in Brooklyn. Tilden, Jay Norvell. He had seven interceptions to lead the Big Ten. And Ken Bubba Sims at the other corner. Third down and 22 yards, make that uh, 23 yards to go. And nothing much on that third down effort as far goes up the middle. And the Hawkeyes are about to get the ball for the first time. A little bit of strategy by Hayden Fry pays off. He put his defense out there, got a sack on Matt Stevens. They're going to get it in good field position here to put their offense on the field. Bill Happel, number 40. He is deep for the Hawkeyes around the driver. Smith, a bad snap, and the Hawkeyes are going to get it at the five-yard line. Covered by Mel Farr, but that's academic. On fourth down, it goes over to Iowa. First and goal at the five, and indeed, Hayden Fry's strategy could not have worked better. A snap right over the head of Ted Henderson. Look at him going up, and I think he could have caught that football if he had kept his eyes on the football. But he dropped his eyes to see where everyone was and lost the ball. It rolled in behind him. The Hawkeyes are just outside the five-yard line. Chuck Long, the All-American quarterback. To Ronnie Hart, he buckles, and UCLA has it. Oh, my. The ball is dead. He caught it on the fly. Had he been on his feet, he could have advanced the fumble. UCLA's Marcus Turner gets the turnover right back for the Bruins. Boy, you talk about a flip-flop of emotion after that big play to get themselves the ball inside the 10. There's the hit right there. Knocked that ball out of his hands. And that's Jarecki, number 99, reaching in to knock it away. And UCLA pounces on the football. All right, you're almost having a look at the Big Ten field. Down say, is there a jinx in Pasadena? Whoa. You couldn't have been presented with a better opportunity. First and goal at the five, and you fumbled it away on the very first opportunity. Two and a half minutes have been played, and we've had plenty in Pasadena. He's your first child. We want to be there. It's your new house. We want to be there. You're working hard to make your dreams come true. Dean Witter wants to dream them with you. No matter what you do in life, Dean Witter will help you plan your investments like no one else's. Because you are like no one else. We'll talk about you, your needs, your goals. Whether it be for a retirement program, a tax savings plan, or managing your investments for the future. of the C. 
Sears Financial Network. The 1986 Rose Bowl being brought to you by Budweiser. Beechwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Dodge, a performance revolution, an American revolution. And by NCR, who bring you a better personal computer. Back-to-back -back plays featuring turnovers. First, Iowa at the UCLA 5, only to have Harmon fumble, and the Bruins have it back at the 7. They give us the Gaston Green out across the 10-yard line. Breeze trips him up for Iowa. It'll be second down and six. Gaston Green, he's a sophomore, rushed for a big game in the Fiesta Bowl a year ago today, remember? He had uh, 144 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Stevens with only 41 attempts, one start and a couple of relief rolls during the course of 85. I have a feeling we'll see David Norrie unless Stevens has an exceptional afternoon. Mel Farr Jr. That'll make Papa proud. He's here from Detroit. First down UCLA. Smart play by Farr. He actually used the official as a blocker as he ducked in behind the umpire. Let's get in and look at that handoff between Stevens and Farr. You know, he dropped one out of there just a moment ago. Actually, Gaston, Gaston Green. Gaston Green, you're right, 44. But you see how he used that official just sliding to the outside. Got an extra blocker out of the striped shirt. Marcus Greenwood in for Mel Farr, number 45 at fullback. Stevens play action. Sideline, almost intercepted by Nate Greer. Did not have an interception during the course of the regular season. When you have a good, solid running game, you can make a defense cut up short with a good fake. They did a good job that time of faking it into the line. We're looking from the offside of the field. Watch Stevens here with a little fake of the toss. Turns right back inside, but Nate Creer was not fooled. He had great position and almost intercepted that football. Second and 10 from the UCLA 20. Green in motion. And they throw to Green. And he's able to manage a four-yard effort tripped up by Ken Sims. Jay Norvell was in on the play as well. Norvell, the first man there, very active defensive back. And a nice story, Dick. Didn't really have much of anything going for him at Iowa until this year. Found a job, found his confidence, and has developed into an outstanding defensive back. Fifth-year senior Norvell led the Big Ten with seven interceptions. Third and six, and the Hawkeyes ready to tee off on Stevens, who throws to Sherrard, and a first down at the 38. Mike Sherrard, and what a story he is. The all-time UCLA leader in receptions with 124. A walk-on student, missed half the year with a broken clavicle, returning from midseason to the Rose Bowl. Here's a chance to see how Sherrard gets open. The blitz was on on that play. Larry Station coming inside. Read well by the quarterback. There's Station, 36, right in the middle of your screen. He's picked up on the play. Stevens did a good job. Good fake by Stevens, but it did not fool Iowa as Gaston Green is smothered in black. A breeze and gear on that right side. The primary hitters. One of the things that is a trademark of this Iowa defense is what we would call stemming. The kind of jumping around that they'll be doing on the line of scrimmage, especially with those linemen and the two inside linebackers. They like to move around in there and try and mix up the offensive blocking assignments. There you see them shifting right there. Mel Farr and Eric Ball in for the first time. Stevens intercepted by Clear. Durrell drags him down the 33-yard line, and a flag is down. We've got a face mask on that play that's going to add some yardage to the field position of Iowa. Where, as you remember, this the pass just moments ago. This pass goes right through Carl Durrell's hands, but it doesn't miss Nate Crear. And watch the grab right here, reaching in and taking a hold of the mask. You'll see it at the end of this play. It'll add yardage on for the Iowa Hawkeyes. So this first quarter thus far played entirely on UCLA's half of the field, and Iowa has the pumpkin. Smile, boys. 
Look at this dang picture. We got bad development again, boys. My hat ain't even white. Well, I always said she was yellow. Oh, that's <laughs> funny coming from a green horn on a green horse. My horse is green. <laughs> Why, you are now, boy. Should have used that new Kodak color watch system. Could have had a great picture then. Try it again. Look for this color watch seal where you get your film developed for quality processing time after time. And if you don't see that color watch sign, keep on riding. So this is Beverly Hills, huh? Guess I'll get used to it. A rodeo skull rodeo. And the best hotel is pink. I'm checking in, they're checking out. My machine is standing out. What's the matter with y'all? Ain't you ever seen a truck? With the interception, and then Durrell dragging him down. They call that a five-yard, grasping the mask, not twisting him down. Could have almost gone for the 15. And the Hawkeyes have it at the 29. We haven't played five minutes yet, Merlin Olsen, and the ball has changed hands on turnovers three times. It's turning over very quickly, and Iowa missing that great opportunity down at the five-yard line. Now with, again, excellent field position just inside the 30. They need to take advantage of this, get some points on the board. You don't want to get that many chances and, and blow the opportunities. That really pumps your opponent up. Now you talk about in the NFL, a 3,000-yard season by a man playing in 16 games. Here's Chuck Long in 11 games, just 22 yards away from a 3,000-yard season. That gives you the kind of uh, numbers that show you the impact of his performance on this Iowa successful year. He really has an unusual throwing style, but we'll try and document for you during the day. Looks almost like a mix-up, and then Whoa. Hudson is stacked up by... Uh, Quintet of white jersey Bruins. Jarecki and Jackson were the first two there. Hudson, a sophomore in that backfield for Iowa. If you are a defensive player, what you want to do is be a part of that swarm. There were about six Bruins on top of Hudson, and he's an explosive player. He's very important to that Iowa offense. You try and gang up on the running backs back there, Ronnie Harmon, you can't do it because Hudson's popping up inside. Against the defense, no one was better against the run in the NCAA major colleges and universities this year than UCLA. Play action to Harmon. Bruins were looking pass, and Harmon has a first down at the 18. Chucky Miller pushes him out of bounds after a 13-yard run by Harmon from Laurelton, New York, went to Bayside High School. Cutting back against the grain. Now watch Harmon. He's going to come from off of your picture and start inside on this play. But it's his ability to cut back against the grain and way off to the opposite side of the field that really makes this play possible for him. Now watch him as he starts inside and now breaks back against the grain. Beautiful job. And back to live action as it was Harmon again on the carry. Joe Gasser makes the stop for UCLA. And a good carry on first down to the 10 yard line where it'll be a second and uh, a long three for the Hawkeyes. Harmon, some would argue, may be the greatest offensive player in the history of Iowa. Of course, uh, you go back to Mal Kinnick and that's a tough argument. But he will finish as the number one receiver in Iowa history, history the number two rusher in Hawkeye history, and the number two scorer. Number two rusher after really only being in that backfield for two years was a wingback two years. Hudson through the middle and he is jolted. Very close to a first down, however, right at the seven yard line. Coming up to greet him was Terry Toomey, number 40, the nose guard. Terry Toomey, a nice story. Not a big nose guard. He's about 235, 240 pounds, but very quick and a very intense player. You look at him and you say, boy, he's giving away a lot of size to that big Iowa offensive line, but he plays with a kind of intensity that makes him really bigger than he is. Third and one for Iowa at the UCLA eight-yard line. Big play. On the ground, it is a first down as a fullback. Hudson falling straight ahead. Tommy Taylor, 42. Batchkoff 92, Jarecki 99 on the stop. But the Hawkeyes have it first and goal again. I talked to Mike Haight earlier. He said, we have some size advantage. We're going to lean on them. We're going to try and wear them down. You saw it right there. They drove that smaller UCL, UCLA defensive line off the ball and picked up the first down. It's interesting, Merlin, that Iowa with the ball thus far in the game has not attempted a pass. And we were looking for that ball uh, in the air a lot. And so is Donahue. 
Well, if you establish the running game, that makes the passing game a lot easier. First and goal, Hudson twisting to the one-yard line. He's from Waxahachie, Texas, the only starting sophomore on Iowa's offense. Joe Gasser up to make the tackle, playing in place of Craig Rutledge. Rutledge, one of the better defensive backs in that secondary. They'll miss him, in particular, against the running game. He's very, very good at coming up to stop those running backs. The H boys, Hudson and Harmon, have kept it on the ground, and now it's Hudson over the top. Touchdown! the hold and it's good after Nate Greer's interception 29 yards in seven plays and from the camera on the far side of the field watch Hudson number 20 what a thrill for that young man the sophomore able to get that ball at the goal line it's a touchdown for Iowa and the Hawkeyes have the early lead 7-0 with 7.02 left in the first Hilton presents Competition Classics. The Tournament of Roses Parade features showbiz stars, but the real stars are on the field where the Southern Cal Trojans are battling the Ohio State Buckeyes. Head on at the goal line. USC fullback Sam Bam Cunningham goes airborne four times, and four times he scores to fuel the Trojans' 42-17 win. The Southern California Trojans, their hunger for competition makes them national champions. Iowa, the early lead, 7-0. Now Rob Houtland to kick off to the Bruins. A couple of freshmen back for UCLA. Daryl Henley and Danny Thompson. It's to Henley's side at the 1. And cut down on a sharp open field tackle by number 94, Bruce Gear, A starter at defensive end and on the special teams. So UCLA... With its third opportunity, the first two chances for the Bruins ended in a bad snap uh, out of punt formation, and Iowa recovering at the five only to give it right back by way of a fumble, and then Nate Freer's interception and return to the 29 with penalty that set up the game's only score. Number 50, Hap Peterson. Dick, did you notice how the UCLA line just froze down there? Pat Peterson jumped early. The center snapped the ball. Everyone else stayed absolutely still. Contact by the defense. I go. They're trained to do that because if they jump up, the officials may choose to negate that penalty if the defensive man does not touch anyone. But because of the way that was played, the ball snapped with the defensive man offside. They get the yardage. They had contact as well, which made it a little easier for the officials. But that is a play that's worked between Joe Coble or any of the centers with a quarterback. Everyone else just freezes, and if they can catch that man in that neutral zone or uh, offside even without contact, they'll take the five, and they get it here. So now the tight end in motion. Green. Not much there at all. Gaston Green snapped up by number 36, Larry Station. That fine inside linebacker. An academic All-American. Bright school. I wonder how things are going at Larry School Station in Omaha's north side where Dad Sr. runs the shop and roots for son Larry. Everyone thought he'd go to Nebraska. UCLA wanted him, too. Interesting that uh, UCLA would have been recruiting Station while uh, Iowa was recruiting Matt Stevens. Both of them stayed near home. Second and four. Terrell in motion. Stevens has not been sharp. His pass is off line. Lots of time before Jeff Drost applied the pressure. Let's go back and look at a couple of defensive linemen and watch the way they're shifting around before the snap of the ball. Just turn it loose. They flip 
Yeah, we didn't get back far enough. That was just the end of it. Actually, they had jumped around a number of times before that ball was snapped. Moving left, moving right. And what they're trying to do is confuse the blocking assignments of the offense. Well, watch that defensive line. They'll do it throughout the course of the game. Third and four, Stevens to throw. He's got his man, Tunnell, the tight end, and a first down at the 36-yard line. Derek Tunnell, who is a highly regarded freshman in a terrific recruiting year for Terry Donahue three years ago. He was a fullback as a freshman, played in the 84 Rose Bowl in that position, now shifted to tight end. He's become a very important part of the passing game, and he's an excellent blocker as well. 6'5 and 236. The jumping around as we watch the defensive line. Did you ever do that uh, as a collegiate or pro? I did at both levels, and I hated it until I saw how much trouble it caused for the offense. Gaston Green. Small crack. The boys that filled in a hurry as Larry Station is there. And what a sense this senior has. He has led the Hawkeyes in tackles each of his four years in Iowa City. Now that's not only a tribute to his ability, but also to his durability. Imagine just staying healthy enough to be in there during that many ball games. Here he is stepping up inside. 36, right hand side of your screen, right up inside. There's nowhere to go. Station just tracking along the line with that runner. It's second and eight. There it is again. It's Matt Stevens doing a good job of mixing his cadence. And obviously the Iowa defense a little too eager. I think he's barking some signals at Five ball play. Then coach went on the defense. There was no contact that time. But this is the alertness of Goble the center to get the extra five. Watch everyone on that line stay still. Goble sees the penetration and snaps the football. <laughs> Stevens goes to his knee. Boy, that is smart football. Hey, look, that's discipline football. Talk about uh, concrete blocks. The rest of that line, they may not get up till next Friday. They, they call that the freeze play. It's strictly <laughs> communication. They with, do freeze, too. <laughs> with center and quarterback. So the first down makes, or the five-yard penalty makes it second and three. Marcus Greenwood pushed back by the Iowa defense and the Hawkeyes have been stingy on the ground. Gaston Green has carried six times for only 10 yards, and Marcus Greenwood got only a yard on that play. It'll be third and a long one. The thing that is impressive to me about this Iowa defense, they started the year having graduated nine of 11 starters. They had to rebuild this defense, and they rebuilt a good one. It was the offense that was experienced and really gave Hayden Fry and Iowa fans their Hopes that did materialize of making it to the Rose Bowl. On third and short, it's Stevens. Complete to Marcus Greenwood. And a first down at the Iowa 40. The first visit by UCLA in Hawkeye territory. This is the kind of play that Terry Donahue was most worried about. A touch pass. Being able to throw that ball to the outside. We saw the end of it, but more important than the end of it was the beginning of it, which you'll see here. A little fake to the running back to give you time. And that's the pass that has to go over the hands, the outstretched hands of the linebacker. Stevens, a fine job. Ball marked at the 41-yard line. Stevens on first down to throw. He guns that one complete at the 31. There you saw the strength of his arm as he hit Mike Sherrard. He drilled that one. Dick, you said earlier that we might see David Norrie. If Matt Stevens continues to play this way, we probably will not see Norrie. Look how he zings that ball in there, right dead between the numbers. Good arm strength. He zipped it. Play is good for nine yards, second and one. The score, Iowa seven, UCLA nothing. Less than four minutes remaining in the first quarter. The sneak by Stevens, and it appears he has the first down at the 30-yard line. Matt Stevens. Listed at six feet a half inch, but that might be a little exaggeration. Uh, 191 pounds from Fountain Valley High School in Southern California. He started three games as a sophomore last year for the injured Steve Bono and started one game in the 85 season. And was injured and Norrie took over the controls and had an outstanding year.
What a fake by Stevens. The entire Iowa team thought he was going to pass. Ball had the football and down the left sideline untouched. He's a freshman from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Michigan proud of their Wolverines and proud of Eric Ball. Here's that replay. You see them popping the hole right up the middle. A good block on half Peterson by Goble the center. And that's 21, Devon Mitchell, who had a chance at Eric Ball and could not pull him down. And UCLA, one point away from tying this one up. John Lee, the All-American place kicker out of David Clinton's hole to try to tie it. And it is good. Lee was missed only once now in 131 attempts at UCLA. Watch the faking again by Stevens. He really locked in the secondary. They were looking for a pass. And the draw to ball. Boy, that's the way you draw it. Just one hand on him. And we have a new game tied at 7. 3.23 left in the first quarter. Eric Ball, the freshman, with a 30-yard gallop for the touchdown, his longest of the season. He scored seven times. UCLA well-blessed at that position. Gaston Green, Eric Ball, James Primus. And now the kickoff. James Bray sends it to the goal line. Back comes Kevin Harmon, the younger brother of Ronnie Harmon. And it'll be the Hawkeyes at about their own 20-yard line. So a seven all time. We've seen the explosive nature of both of these teams. Some said that 21 points wouldn't win it today. Well, even though we've got good defenses on the field, Dick, I think these are explosive offenses. And it's interesting. You, you keep these players off the field for a little while. The offenses seem to be able to come back and put points on the board, especially for UCLA with all those good running backs. They've got a stack of them in there. And now Chuck Long, we haven't seen him throw a pass as yet. Doesn't figure he'll disappoint us long. A little deception there. And outside goes Hudson for a first down. Well, it's been a day for freshmen in this first quarter. Hudson scoring for Iowa. And Eric Ball countering the first year runner for UCLA. Let's go back and take a quick peek at that last play from the end zone. Chance to watch the faking by Chuck Long. And look how quickly Kelly O'Brien, 66, out there from his left guard position. You get an idea of how much power David Hudson has as he runs right out of a tackle there by Joe Gasser. 14 yards for Hudson and a first down. And here's Long's first pass in the Rose Bowl. And he finds Bill Happel at the 43. And it appears to be another first down. Dennis Price, the tackler. Bill Happel, if that name sounds familiar, a long time uh, Rose Bowl fans, his daddy played here and scored a touchdown. Chuck Long getting that ball off very quickly. And one of the things you've got to like about Happel and Helverson, the other receiver on the other side, these guys have glue on their hands. Boy, you get the ball close by, and they got their mitts on it, and they don't give it up. That doesn't matter what the weather is. They played in rain and bad weather most of the year at Iowa, and these guys don't drop the ball. the ground. You'll see for yourselves here. Harmon gets loose to the first one. Fighting for the ball at Melvin Jackson. Well, they hit behind a yard marker. We couldn't tell on that play. The UCLA players bouncing quickly in the air saying we've got it. And indeed, Terry Donahue's Bruins have a first and ten. Ball at the Iowa just inside the 45-yard line. 7-7 the score. 2.45 left in the first. Matt Stevens under pressure. Incomplete, trying to find his tight end, Tennell. Good pressure from 76. The All-Big Ten tackle, Jeff Dross. Jeff Dross all over Stevens on that play, and this is one of the things you mentioned earlier, Dick. Stevens, probably about 5'10", maybe even shorter than that. Look how he has to look up over the top of that big defensive lineman. Well, he really got to look up now. He's flat on his back. Yeah, you can tell what kind of toothpaste they use in the morning when you get that close. <laughs> Second and ten. 
The give is to Gaston Green. Down to the 37 of the Hawkeyes before Ken Sims, number nine at the left corner, can make the stop. Bubba Sims from East St. Louis, Illinois. He's a senior. Third down and four for UCLA. Far and Green split now instead of the eye behind Stevens. Looking for Durrell. He's open. It's a first down at the Hawkeye 25. Carl Durrell, he led UCLA on the season with 36 catches. Carl Durrell, who had one go through his hands for an interception shortly ago, or a little while ago, doesn't let this one get away. Just a simple little out pattern. Nobody in the picture. That's Nate Creer, 29, finally getting over there, but giving Durrell way too much room on that play. UCLA with a first down at the 25. That's in John Lee's field goal range, but they're looking for more with two minutes left in the first quarter. Green hit hard. Jeff Drost. 286 pounds senior, the biggest Hawkeye, and he gets off the ball in a hurry. Drop, driving to the inside on that play. Stunning, which this line does quite often. You'll see him coming from the right-hand side. He just nailed Gaston Green, who was looking the other direction. Green is lucky that ball didn't bounce out of his hands. One of four starters on defense from the state of Iowa. The middle three, Frost, Peterson, and Vries, all from the Hawkeye State. Stevens looking deep for Turnell, and it's too far. Derek Turnell, the tight end. George Davis, 37, the linebacker, hurried Stevens. Jay Norvell doing a good job of coverage, and I think Stevens wisely just decided to put that one in the stands. Brings up third down and 10, a long 10. UCLA has been successful on third down conversions. Stevens at his best. In this spot, four out of five in the quarter. Going for six. It was Sherrard. He was open. The pass too tall and almost intercepted by Devon Mitchell. And here comes the All-American John Lee. Korean-born. He was on the Korean National Little League baseball team as a pitcher first baseman. His family moving to the United States and just recently, a month and a half ago, became an American citizen, as you heard Bill McAtee's report in our preview. Lee, on the year, missed only three field goals. He is the all-time NCAA record holder, 79 field goals in his four-year career. This one is from 42 yards. And it is good. Lee gives UCLA the lead, 10-7. So the Bruins lead for the first time, 10-7. And Lee has been a weapon for four straight years for Terry Donahue. You wonder what a young man thinks about. They all have their rituals. John Lee, well, he's a different sort of character. I think of something really off the wall, things like uh, being a Korean and everything, maybe what, what I could do something, um, 1988 Olympics and things like that. So maybe the NBC has a right to uh, the, uh, the Olympics, maybe uh, I'd do something, be a translator or something, things like that, it's something off the wall. I don't really get involved with the emotional, uh, the, the outcome, what's, what's, it's not that big a deal, it's only a few ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, he is cool. <laughs> he is cool. The kickoff, not by Lee, but by Bray. Down to Harmon at the five. He has some opening, 30, and tripped up at the 31-yard line, just as he saw daylight by Kirk Alexander. He is the younger brother of a former UCLA All-American, Kermit Alexander. There's Kevin Harmon. He's a year behind his uh, brother Ronnie, playing the same halfback position. A lot of brothers on this Iowa team. I think that's a, certainly a good sign for Hayden Fry's program. If the program's not going well, you don't say, hey, little brother, come on down and join me. Well, they like Kevin as well. He 
in limited duty rest for 180 yards but it's Hudson and Ronnie Harmon who are behind Chuck Long the Hawkeyes down by three with 106 left in the first quarter and Long's going to open it up with protection good catch by Ronnie Harmon cannot run with a fumble in college ball unless it's caught in the air. It's UCLA and the turnover again. And who could have dreamed that your All-American running back and you see Hayden Fry saying, hey, that's all right. We'll have our chances stepping over there. That's three times today that Ronnie Harmon has turned the football over. He's an outstanding receiver, an outstanding runner. Does not have a history as a fumbler. But boy, he's getting that ball stripped away. That's Ken Norton, 41, knocking it out of his hands right on the sideline. In this first quarter, five turnovers, three times coughed up by Iowa, and twice by UCLA. And the Bruins have it at the Hawkeye 34. Far and green behind Stevens. It's Gaston Green. And like Ronnie Harmon of Iowa, wore that wonderful ability to be able to stop and start on a dime and those quick cuts. Many feel here on the West Coast that this man, Gaston Green, if he stays healthy, is a candidate for a Heisman a year or two away. He has that kind of talent. He certainly has explosive ability. It's exciting to watch a young man who can just leave people laying on the ground out there. Second down five. So that defense move around. Give the green and shy of the first down. George Davis made the tackle. It'll be third and short for UCLA. And that probably the last play of this first quarter. Three seconds, two, one. And that's it. First period is history here in Pasadena in this 72nd Rose Bowl game. Turnover plague, first 15 minutes, UCLA by three. You'd never expect to catch a feet. Dick Anberg with Merlin Olsen. We go to the second quarter, 10-7 UCLA. Dick, let's look quickly at this stemming we talked about. Bruce Gear on the top and Larry Station. Now watch how they move. As soon as Matt Stevens turns his head to call his audible, they'll move in, they'll change the look. Watch them as they shift back and forth. Very disconcerting to a defense, or to an offense. First play of the second period is third and two UCLA at the Hawkeye 27. They'll make that the 26 yard line. Green, big hole, first down at the 17 of Iowa. Devon Mitchell at free safety, stopped a touchdown. What a great move by Mitchell. We'll see that after we look at these stats quickly. And of course, UCLA, 102 total yards and 1103 possession time. Boy, they have dominated the stats. Only have a three-point edge on the board. Watch the cutback, the little wiggle right there, and then the shot up inside. That's the quickness you were talking about earlier, Dick. 33 yards now for Green. First down, UCLA leading 10 to 7. Green up the middle. A huge hole. And he tripped up and falls at the nine-yard line. That is going to be very near another first down. Right between a couple of all Big Ten performers, Drost and Hap Peterson, number 76 and 50. It's explosiveness here that gets him through there. Watch him on the right-hand side of your screen. Right in between those two linemen, he gets away. Drost got one of those big arms on him, and that's what put him on the ground. But he picked up about eight yards in the fall. No out of the color of this drive it's been all green four straight carries by Gaston and a second down and a long one green again and a first down at the four and boy that quick movement setting up his blockers they thought he was going outside but this has been a problem with green he has suffered injuries in his first two years at UCLA he's not been 100% for either of his two years uh, in Westwood. Reaching for the hamstring there, perhaps hurt himself as he explodes on this play. Iowa thought that one of the linemen moved prior to the snap, and they were waving that at the officials. No one made the call. Looks like he just, he didn't get hit. I think he may just have stretched that hamstring on his own. We have an Iowa player on the ground as well. Trainer out to check on him. Oh, did you see how many 
black jerseys were down on the grass. Some terrific blocking in front of Green, who will be replaced by Eric Ball, the freshman who scored the first UCLA touchdown. And this is where the platooning of those running backs will pay dividends for Terry Donahue. He really has alternated five backs, two at fullback and three at that tailback position. And Eric Ball has had some outstanding days on the year. In fact, had four touchdowns against San Diego State earlier in the year. Dominated the scoring in that game. Hayden Fry out on the field to check on a wounded warrior. That's that's Pryor. It's on the on the shoulders of two of the trainers to help him off the field here. He's the youngest of the Iowa starters. They start nine seniors a junior, and he's only a sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey. And uh, does not look good. As soon as we get a report, we'll share it with you. It's first and goal. UCLA at the Hawkeye four-yard line. Greenwood and ball behind Stevens. Stevens. Fumble. It's a free ball. Frazier's defense with all the pressure on them, their feet almost in the end zone. They come wide open. Sims from the backside, and Stevens never did see him. Knocked that ball away. Norvell, two defensive backs on the blitz, and it's Norvell who covered the football to give the ball back to the Iowa Hawkeyes. The sixth turnover today. What do you do when you already build one of the best production sports cars in the world? If your Nissan, you build it even better. You widen the track, reduce air turbulence, dramatically improve its already legendary handling and performance. No wonder Motor Trend magazine called his new 300ZX the best all-around Z car ever built. When you're talking performance, the name is Nissan. The 1986 Rose Bowl, brought to you by John Hancock Financial Services, meeting today's needs with a range of financial products. By General Electric, at GE, we bring good things to life. And by Visa, accepted worldwide for shopping, dining, and travel. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Oh, Iowa had the ball first and goal at the Bruin five and fumbled early in the game. And now UCLA with first and goal at the four fumbles. And Iowa has it at the Hawkeye 19. It remains 10-7 UCLA. 13 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Quick hitter by Hudson. And they're using that play often. Bruins perhaps geared for Ronnie Harmon or the passing of Long. And it has been Hudson, the busy man in the Iowa offense. Dick, uh, sometimes when a back fumbles the ball, he kind of gets down on himself. And you, we saw Hayden Fry patting Ronnie Harmon on the back over there and saying, don't worry about it. You can hold a great back down sometimes, two or three quarters. But if he keeps coming, somewhere along the line, he gets away. I think that's going to happen for Harmon today. Iowa has a speed receiver in, but the give is to Harmon, and he's stacked up at the 25-yard line. Quinn Early and Robert Smith are the two burners, wide receivers for Iowa, For Happel and Helverson, the starters, are the possession men. When you Usually when you see Smith and Early in there, someone's going deep. I said that Harmon was going to get away, not on that play. <laughs> <laughs> the UCLA defense all over him, and they've turned the lights on here, the Rose Bowl. This overcast settling in. Not a typical California day unless you live at the beach, but it is foggy. Third and four. Long. That quick release, and what a throw. 40, 42. Ronnie Harmon. Boy, he reminds me of that quick release and throwing off the back foot of Dan Marino. Boy, does he have a quick gun. He has a quick throwing action, and he reads the defense and the field well. Watch him as he gets great protection from that offensive line. Kelly O'Brien over there doing a good job on Whalen. And there are those soft hands. They've been a little too soft today. Dropped it a few times. But boy, that's a nice play. Ken Norton Jr., the son of the former heavyweight champion on the coverage. That was good coverage. That's just perfect throwing. And there's another strike to Quinn Early, number one. He's a junior from Great Neck, New York. 
and long throwing strikes. Dennis Price, the tackler. Well, how do you control an All-American defensive tackle? The most valuable player in the Pac-10, number 95, right in the middle of your screen. That's Mark Whalen. You just surround him with about four black shirts, and then hang on. And <laughs> where's he going to go? He thought he was in the wrong huddle there for a while. Ball at the 49 of Iowa. We're at second and three. Give it to Harmon. Gets outside. Good move. And a first down at the UCLA 44. Chucky e. Miller throwing him out of bounds. Pleased to have with us here in Pasadena. And uh, he's got to fly a little low today to get us a shot. The Goodyear blimp. Our pilot is Charles Russell from nearby Downey, California. 1986 marks the 60th consecutive year that Goodyear blimps have flown over major bowl games. And there's a shot from that vehicle. First down hour at the Bruin 44. The Hawkeyes trail 10 to 7. Screen. Harmon. 40. 35. And close to another first down at the 34 before Miller can get him out of bounds. Bo Schembechler called Harmon the best dodger in college football down right at the edge of the field you almost feel like you're a part of the action here and there's the screen you let the defensive lineman in and then you count on the good instincts and running ability of a back like Harmon to get you downfield nice play good pickup and with short yardage let's see if Hayden Fry might not gamble on this situation on a second less than a yard well, he's going to go for the first down and gives to the fullback Hudson he didn't need much Backed up by the entire center of the UCLA defense, Steve Jarecki, uh, senior from Napa, California, up in the good wine country, made that hit. Didn't need much, didn't get much on that play. That's 23 James Primus. Yeah. Primus, who is the number three tailback in the uh, UCLA offense behind Ball and Green. It is good enough for the first down at the UCLA 33. He played in that UCLA big upset 20 years ago. Mel Farr was his teammate. Bruins upset Michigan State, the number one team unbeaten that year. Long have to eat it back at the 47-yard line. So the Bruins have their first sack, and Frank Batchkoff, 92, a junior from Reseda, California, San Fernando Valley lad, makes the tackle. Dick, we're used to seeing tight ends who get down in the three-point like these linemen. Here's the tight end in an upright position, standing up. That's a Hayden Fry trademark. He's done that since his days at North Texas State. This situation, that tight end is blocking, trying to keep Melvin Jackson out of the play. Unfortunately, Long got outside, got himself in trouble, couldn't find a receiver. We'll look at that during the play. That's a very unusual trademark or signature of this Iowa Hawkeye offense. I'd like to ask you about that. Doesn't make it tough when you have to block down on a tackle? Second and 24. Long, look at the time, finds his man, Robert Smith, at the 32-yard line. Gain of about 16. What a great pass by Chuck Long. You know, you watch him in practice. He throws the ball with an almost casual flick of the arm. And you're not terribly impressed until you notice that all of those passes seem to go right where they're supposed to go. Look how quickly that ball is in the air. That little sidearm and wrist action gets it right to his receiver. Again, that receiver, Robert Smith, well covered. And Craig Rutledge, who is playing after knee surgery, has a big brace on his knee, is in at safety. Third and nine, Harmon. Looked like a little shovel pass and tripped up. A blocking tackle by Joe Gasser, 28, who came up from a safety slot. Trying to get that ball in behind Whalen on that right side. When you have a very good defensive lineman, they tend to get upfield quickly. And that shovel pass discourages that kind of penetration. So that was a pass, just a little delay, and then a, almost a forward handoff. But it wasn't handed off, just tossed ahead to Harmon. To the 26, short of the first down, fourth and two and a half. Rob Houtland to try a 43-yard field goal to tie. He's got the distance. No, he doesn't. 
It falls short in the end zone, but a flag is down, and we may have a penalty against UCLA. Roughing the kicker, and that'll give Iowa a first down. And Howland, bitterly disappointed in his kick, will trade his body for the first down on that one very happily. Let's go back and look at the play. Look how sharp the angle is as he comes in. Not a good job of holding that ball, but there's the knockdown right there. 42, Tommy Taylor, the man who ended up on Houtland's legs. And of course, that markoff will give the, uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, wait a minute. What are they doing now, Dick? You have no tip? Okay. We're okay. going to make sure that the ball was not tipped before they mark off the penalty. If it had been tipped, then there would be no penalty. If they get their hands on the football, be it a punt or be it a field goal, then you don't have the call. Running in the kicker, five yards on the first down. Ball marked down to the 21-yard line. So the Hawkeyes, instead of coming up empty on the 42-yard miss, will get the penalty in the first down. Coming from another angle. Watch the top of your screen. There's Tommy Taylor coming in. You see how far short the kick is. And obviously no one touched that football. That was the contention of the UCLA defense. Nine minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first half. UCLA 10, Iowa 7. Long, under pressure to Hanko. First down and goal just inside the 10. Miller with a defensive play and another perfect throw by All-American Chuck Long. A nice play as Long rolls out to his right. Just a little half roll. Gets a good block by Ronnie Harmon there, but he couldn't keep... Ooh, who is that? That's Terry, Terry Toomey. Toomey. Diving and actually threw that ball after Toomey had a hold of his ankle. But again, right on the run. I wow. Mean, Apple couldn't have asked for it in a better place. First and goal. They had the full 10 yards to go. Little misdirection to Hudson, the fullback, for about three. Taking to Harmon left and giving to Hudson back inside and Tommy Taylor... The senior from Chattanooga, Tennessee, Freight Train Taylor, two times an all-conference performer in the Pac-10, made the hit. You run misdirection plays most often out of respect for a defense. Taylor is one of those who reacts very quickly. Talking to the offensive coordinators for Iowa, Bill Snyder, he said, we've got to run some of those plays to make sure that we keep that defense on it. Second and goal from the seven. Long. Incomplete. Tied in Mike Flagg at the back end of the end zone. The intended target, but Long saw him covered by James Washington and tossed it high and away. Oh, what a day this has been on NBC Sports. Michigan defeating Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl. And coming up at halftime, we'll have highlights of that action as well as this Rose Bowl encounter. And, of course, we invite you to stay with us on NBC, a game that may feature the crowning of the national champion in college football as Oklahoma meets unbeaten Penn State down in the Orange Bowl. We're ready to cover all the action from that, uh, from that uh, key game. Chuck Long, concerned about running out of time, decided not to worry it, took a timeout. Grace sure looked good tonight, didn't she? Yeah. So how much you making now? Huh? I'm going fine. You got to be making at least 25. I'm fine. Maybe a little better than that. 30? Tell me yes or no. Are you making 30? Yes. 30? Around 30. Got any investments? Any stuff? Got the car? That's not an investment. You got an IRA? Life insurance? Not really. You're making 30. And you don't have anything like that. What do you think? You're 18 years old or something? I'm Alexander Black of Black's Magic, and I solve what some people call unsolvable crimes. Is that all? 
Well, I used to be a master magician, which doesn't hurt. Is that all? Well, the way I solve crimes makes Black's magic most unusual. Is that all? I couldn't do it without my dad here. The shrewdest con man you've ever met. That's all. There was a rumor that you knocked on the door of the state of Iowa and no one was home. <laughs> well, there are plenty of them out here. 104,000 jammed into this marvelous crater in the Arroyo Seco. We don't see the San Gabriel Mountains today. They're in the fog. They're there. They are indeed, and the fans are seeing an outstanding game. And here, a critical play on third and goal from the seven. Hudson on a draw, and that did not fool UCLA. Tommy Taylor staying home. Ken Norton, 41, was there as well. Everything smashed up inside as the UCLA defense responded extremely well to that play. Nothing they could do. This drive for Iowa began, you'll recall, when UCLA Stevens fumbled on first and goal way down at the Hawkeye four. This is Houtland's second attempt to get three out of it. Much shorter. This will be a 24-yard attempt. And we have a new game. It's tied at 10. Rob Houtland, the junior from Glenview, Illinois, a walk-on. And how does he feel about uh, not being the GOAT after missing that field goal? <laughs> well, he made one, and he got the three on the board. Houtland out of Mark Velasic's hold, and with 7.43 left in the half, it's tied. Howdy, stranger. Houston and Sons, I'm J.A. J.B. J.C. Oh, you're related. We're in oil. We're in a big the new NCR PC6 can store 40 megabytes. We need mega gobble. This'll gobble. This'll store the history of Texas. And then some. <laughs> you surprised? Nope. NCR's big in computers. We'll take 10. Yahoo! We don't do that anymore. You be? A better computer. It's exactly what you'd expect from NCR. It's easy to build a tough truck. Real easy. All you gotta do is give it a five-speed transmission, independent front suspension, steel-belted radio, welded double-wall bed, and a standard engine with power no other leading compact can beat. The hard part is doing it for a low sticker price like Nissan. Special factory incentives to dealers can help save you hundreds of dollars. Make your best deal right now. The name is Nissan. The best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC. January 11th, the Hula Bowl spotlights Lombardi Trophy winner Tony Casillas, running back sensation Napoleon McCallum, and the nation's top senior All-Americans in their final collegiate appearance. The Hula Bowl, college football's best and brightest are on NBC Sports. 10-10 as Houtland from 24 yards after the fumble recovery when Matt Stevens was hit deep in Iowa territory, and now Houtland to kick it off. Danny Thompson, Daryl Henley are deep for UCLA. Skids it down the middle, picked up by an up-back. And it's Mel Farr, Jr., out to the 30-yard line. That kind of kick works much better on an artificial turf, and the Hawkeyes use that effectively all year long. That ball kicks and skids and bounces on a natural turf, kind of kills the bounce. Far able to scoop it up on the dead run, and they got good field position to start this drive. Matt Stevens brings him out of the huddle. He is 7 for 13 in this first half, 73 yards, one interception, and he has fumbled once. Greenwood and Eric Ball. Gaston Green has not returned since uh, suffering a leg injury. It's too far. Jr. That 22 is the same number his daddy wore as an All-American at Westwood. An explosion right up the middle as Farr read the blocking well. They got stationed 36 to overreact and Farr just blew his way out there for a fine game. A quick look at the linebackers. There's station number 36. You saw him overreact to the start of the play. Stevens, a flanker screen. Well read as Willie Anderson is dumped for a loss by Nate Freer. Anderson, nicknamed Flipper, uh, 
speedy wide man, the fastest of the Bruins. It runs around a 4-3-5. But boy, Greer was right on his jersey. Flipper got flipped on that one. Well, that's uh, some good scouting work by the Iowa defense. They were not fooled at all by that play. A loss of a yard, second and 11 at the Hawkeye 46. Eric Ball. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Devon Mitchell came up from free safety. Make the stop on Ball. He's 6'1 and 215 pounds, Ball, the freshman. Very strong. He'll squat almost 500 pounds of all the backs, maybe even the fullbacks. He's the strongest of the lot. And he already has had a fine New Year's Day with that 30-yard run for the UCLA touchdown in the first quarter. Third down, five. Oh, big hole for Ball. New Year for Eric Ball. Oh, it's a wow. great start to 86. He has carried the ball three times, two touchdowns, 75 yards. Total rushing. Lee, point after, down the middle, and UCLA leads 17 to 10. Eric Ball on the option, catching the Iowa defense by surprise, a 40-yard touchdown. These are the hands of Mr. Goodwrench, hands that work. Hands with the know-how to fix things. Hands that are strong and sure. Hands that are gentle, accurate. Hands that can almost see where the trouble is and how to make it right again. Hands of skill. Hands that care. The working hands of Mr. Goodwrench. And no one knows your GM car better. No one. They say the best ones are the hard ones. These you don't break. You try to reach an agreement. And when you do, you head for the mountains. Bush. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountain. Dick Enberg, I know that you uh, are a young man, but tell us about... Uh, tell Happy us about New Year your, to you. Happy New Year. Tell us about your first recollections of this uh, Rose Boy. I think it was 1943. UCLA. It was UCLA's first game here. Frankie Sinkwich and Charlie Trippy came here from Georgia. And I remember that. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> Bulldogs beat UCLA 9 nothing. Listen to an old Emerson radio out in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, that game, remember, Bob Waterfield was the UCLA quarterback. And you know it... I guess it's a measure of an event that you do associate times in your life with great moments in sports, and I think for the Rose Bowl fans, they can associate with a lot of big days with this January 1st and what happened in Pasadena. Certainly the players themselves and coaches do. Bray's kick is a long one and will not be run out by Harmon of Iowa. So they'll start from the 20-yard line. Dick, one of the interesting things, we talk about signatures and little interesting idiosyncrasies of the teams. The UCLA kickoff team puts a couple of people way back behind the line, and they run their people up. See them coming from 10 yards back. That's uh, Dameron and, and Alan Dial. Jeff Dameron and Alan Dial, look at them now. They time it so that they arrive at running at full speed. That puts two people down there very quickly into the coverage. Just a little, uh, little difference there. Not many teams do that. 
That's something that UCLA has developed that they really enjoy using. UCLA terminology, they call them DHs, designated hitters. Oh, that's really getting a flying start. They're starting back at the 25-yard line. Iowa now trailing 17-10 is Harmon. And he's caught for a loss at the 18. The man who made the tackle was Ken Norton Jr., but the play was made by a teammate, Tommy Ray Rutledge. Taylor. And Tommy Taylor. Yeah, Tommy Taylor yeah, absolutely burying, coming Tommy in Taylor. from the yeah, right side Ken of your Norton screen. Now watch the way he attacks that. There he is, just knocking that blocker, that Hudson, right off his feet. Oh, Harmon did a great job of avoiding Taylor. But he couldn't avoid the next man up who stripped him to the ground, Norton. Well, they like Norton, who is a sophomore, a true sophomore. He's not uh, been redshirted. There's a comparison today. The All-American long, he's 9 for 10, 93 yards. Stevens has uh, hit about 50% of his passes. Another completion for long as he hits Craig Clark, the backup tight end. He caught only five balls during the course of the year. Clark, a junior from Columbus Junction, Iowa. Very short gain will bring up a third and ten for these Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes deep in their own territory, 5-13 on the clock. And having watched Ball sprint for a touchdown to put UCLA up 17-10, to Aiden Fry, who calls all the plays, is running down his list. He said, hey, we've got to find something to put points on the board here. Third and ten, Happel to the right, Helverson to the left. They stay on the ground, surprisingly, but it works. Is he there for the first down? It depends on where they mark it. I believe he might have made it. A ten-yard carry on the draw to Ronnie Harmon. Well, did they mark it on the front foot or the back foot? He marks it right on both feet, and I think it's going to be enough for the first down. It is. Well, that's a good call. Everyone looking fast, and he goes to the draw. Hayden Fryer likes to cross you up. Nice play here. A little misdirection on the draw. Same kind of move we saw by Ball starting in to his left, our right as we look at it, and getting the linebackers to react a little bit and then cutting back against the grain. Ronnie Harmon doing a good job on that play. You saw Carnell Lake 31 get to Harmon, but Harmon's strength dragging him forward for the first down at the 30. Four minutes, four seconds left in the half. Long to scramble and back to the line of scrimmage that's all number seven chance johnson in on that play he is a freshman from compton california was considered the top high school football player in southern california as a senior in high school has been shifted from safety to a uh, linebacker position just a little half roll on that play and we'll do it quickly watch the quarterback long just stretch out of there he'll get a block from his fullback he wants to run a little bit further, but tremendous pressure on the outside kept him from getting out of there. Brings up second and ten. Good protection. Now breaks down. He has to dump it off to the tight end flag. And Mike Flagg gains four and draws a crowd of Bruins. Taylor and Miller leading the charge. Again, you see Long kind of throwing off that back foot. But he has such a, a strong arm and a quick flip of that wrist that he can get that ball out of there and put it on target. Third and about, what is that, about seven yards exactly, six yards exactly for these Hawkeyes. And you see the Bruins putting some pass defense on the field right now. they got to believe that Long's going to throw the football. Mass substitution, six new defenders in on this third down six. Draw. So Iowa crosses him up, and that's Harmon again all the way to the UCLA 49. First down. 18 yards for Harmon. So two third and long situations. UCLA looking pass. Harmon run and first down Iowa. It's almost a card game. They said, hey, he bluffed on the last one. Faked the pass, ran the draw. We bet he's going to run the pass. Nope. Right back to Harmon. The same play. And Harmon again gets enough for the first down. That's Price, number six, finally getting a shot from behind. Part of the tackle. Harmon, he's the free spirit, does impersonations, quite a character. 2.23 left in the half. Complete to Harmon. Fumbles. Is it in play? And who's got it? UCLA. out of his grasp as he tried to gain added yardage. You begin to wonder if maybe Ronnie Harmon isn't just too tight, maybe trying to do too much in this game. 
he may be trying Hayden Fry's patience at this point too. As for Terry Donahue, he just tickled to death that his Bruins are getting some of those balls to bounce in their direction. So Iowa driving toward a potential tying touchdown, trailing 17-10, coughs it up, UCLA ball, Ken Norton recovered at the Bruin 48. Stevens looking for more and going long, open. Canell, the tight end. That's number eight, I think. Oh, it is. Carl Durrell. I was wondering. I didn't think uh, Tanell could run that fast. 38 yards on the play. Carl Durrell can sure do it. Down the right sideline. It's just enough. He's working one-on-one -on, -one on number nine, Ken Sims. And Sims just could not keep up. A little late getting his jump and missed that ball by just a fraction of an inch. Good play, UCLA. Less than two minutes remaining first half. First down at the Iowa 14. Eric Ball to the five-yard line. He's looking for the hat trick in the first half. Ball, the freshman, Station, and Mitchell, two veterans in the Iowa defense, make the stop. Hammering over the left side of that offensive line, right in behind Mike Hartmeyer. Good job. And timeout has been called. One minute, 46 seconds left in the half. Mr. Goodwrench has the right tools available. Tools of the science of automotive service. Advanced. Sensitive. Accurate. Strong and simple. Or complex, like electronic eyes that probe the mysteries of your car. These are the tools that understand and fix. These are the tools of Mr. Goodrich. And no one knows your GM car better. No one. Sinus congestion. I can breathe again. Ah, the sweet smell of success. Get it with 12-hour Nostrella and Nostril with the one-way spray pump. It delivers a measured dose of penetrating mist every time. Squeeze sprays don't. You can't buy more effective sinus medicine. Ah, the sweet smell of success. Only 12-hour Nostrella and Nostril regular or mild have the one-way pump. It's the most advanced relief you can give your nose. Success. Terry Donahue now in his 10th season at UCLA. If the Bruins should win today, it would be his 80th win. Eight, an average per year. He has developed an outstanding program here in Southern California. Still a boyish presence about him. Can you imagine him playing defensive tackle at 195 pounds in the Rose Bowl 20 years ago? He's probably less than that right now. That was the game, you'll recall, where uh, Bob Stiles, he weighed about 150 pounds, tackled Bob Apisa of Michigan State, the number one team. On a two-point conversion try, Duffy Doherty's team trying to make it 14-all, and UCLA won at 14-12. This is second down and two at the Hawkeye six. Ball. And he's having one. Three touchdowns for Eric Ball. for freshman Eric Ball. Hello, Ypsilanti, Michigan. That is a community, Eastern Michigan University, located there just outside of Ann Arbor. That part of the country celebrating. Michigan has beaten Nebraska, and now one of their homegrown starring here for UCLA. Half Peterson in a little early to get a tap on one of the linemen. Not enough to really make a difference, although Terry Donahue might elect if that marches halfway to the goal line to go for a uh, two-pointer. Tom Quinn's microphone obviously having uh, some technical problems. This one's against UCLA. Ah. Well, what happens to Terry Donahue? Here's David Norrie, number nine. Uh, a lot of things must be going through that young man's mind. He was... Uh, major contributor to UCLA winning the Pac-10 conference and then the injury and here in the big one the Rose Bowl is a senior he has to give way to Matt Stevens 
lead to kick from five yards farther away it would be uh, in essence a 25 yard extra point try. has such a his leg is as accurate as Long's arm such a comfortable style as he just floats into that ball here's that touchdown play and again it's ball's ability to start outside and watch the cut right here back inside yeah. right through the grasp of George Davis number 37 and on into the end zone Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Only the world aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Make a vote light, the best of both worlds. Make a vote light, oh yes you can. Have it all. When you're dealing with higher volumes of information and need answers fast, you search everywhere for solutions, but find it hard to get on top of things. That's why IBM created the personal computer AT with the power to push high performance even higher. With the AT, fast becomes faster, and the capacity to handle data becomes greater, all to help put your business on solid ground. The IBM personal computer AT for advanced technology. So Iowa, late in this first half with the ball, UCLA territory, only to find uh, star back Ronnie Harmon fumbling the ball away for the fourth time in the half, and UCLA quickly converting. Eric Ball, the freshman with his third touchdown of the half, and UCLA opens a 24-10 lead. Here come the DHs as Bray hits it high and spins it down into the end zone. Harmon's going to take it out. Flags are down, and so is young Kevin Harmon at the 17-yard line. And I believe we have a penalty against Iowa. Chance Johnson, freshman linebacker, made the tackle. Clipping against the Hawkeyes. That'll take it half the distance to the goal line. Let's go back quickly and look at that last play. Linebackers have got to flow with the play. Davis and Station, and watch them as they flow to the outside, but then watch what happens to Davis right at the end of this play. Gets outside and actually runs by the ball carrier. There it is, right there. Let's look at it right there. You see Ball coming inside of Davis and driving then toward the end zone. He breaks away from that tackle, gets off another tackle, and throws himself into that end zone. The three touchdowns in the first half puts Eric Ball only one away from the Rose Bowl touchdown record, modern record, by 1973 Sam Bam Cunningham most of those were the short ones over the top he scored four times in fact I think a couple of the shots we saw in our pregame were of Sam Bam putting himself into the air launching himself as he was and he was a guided missile for the Trojans Dick in this kind of situation during the year Hayden Fry occasionally has pooch kick in other words just kicked it out on first down he's not going to do it here however from the four yard line Harmon a marked man, and it's been a highly disappointing and frustrating one for Harmon. A terrific player. He rushed for over 1,100 yards this year, caught 49 passes. You know, he started today only 52 yards shy of a mile offense for Iowa this year, but he's fumbled the ball away four times. I mentioned earlier that maybe he is just too tight and trying to do too much, and you can say, well, how can that happen to you? How can that happen in a game like this? Well. Believe me, they've, they've really been isolated, and they've been thinking about nothing but football. Maybe they've been thinking too much football. Long from his end zone. Whoa. Avoiding the safety. Has a man open. Could not hit Robert Smith, the junior from Dallas, Texas. He's a top sprinter, perhaps the fastest man in this Iowa team. Got himself turned around, couldn't quite come up with it, but he was open. Hayden Fry, a former quarterback himself in his playing days with the Baylor Bears back in uh, 1947 through 1950. Even though Hayden has Bill Snyder as offensive coordinator sitting up top in the press box, he doesn't wear the headset. They've decided on a game plan going in. And he, of course, uh, sending the plays out 
Chuck Long with the option to change those plays at the line of scrimmage, and he'll change 15 to 20 during a ball game. 47 seconds left in the half. Uh, Iowa needs a first down, or UCLA's going to get still another chance. Good catch by Harmon, one-handed, and then gets outside and has the first down. What an effort. That was a big play. If he doesn't make it, UCLA calls time, and they would have had a chance to get Lee on the field for a field goal, presuming uh, Iowa would have had the punt. So you see the dodging ability here, Dick. You're absolutely right. That is a big play. You, you're already down. You don't want it to get any more. One hand. You see him there carrying that ball rather loosely in that hand. He has not, as we said, fumbled a great deal during the year, but he has had four on the ball today. Timeout has been called. A chance for us to pay tribute to one of the teams participating today, UCLA. UCLA, dreams become reality. Each year, thousands of people graduate from UCLA's numerous colleges and professional schools and realize their dreams, pursuing careers in law, medicine, engineering, the arts, and education. Hopes for better tomorrows come true today in UCLA's sophisticated research centers and laboratories where researchers conquer disease and search for new energy sources. UCLA is a place where the future is happening now as faculty and students work and grow together. At UCLA, dreams become reality because of a continuing commitment to academic excellence. Excellence that has made UCLA one of America's leading universities. UCLA, an investment in the future. UCLA leading Iowa 24 to 10 and the fans of the Bruins and the fans of Iowa and all of those hundred thousand plus here in the Rose Bowl looking ahead to halftime part of this grand day of celebration from the parade through the game wonderful music and we'll share some of that with you at the intermission as well as all the scores and highlights of other bowl activities so stay with us long on first down final minute and a half completes the Hudson Short yardage and long down under pressure, Mark Whalen. Dick, you keep your finger on the pulse of an offense by looking at what they're doing on first down and also how they're converting on third down. UCLA so far in the game averaging seven yards per carry on first downs. Iowa only 3.9 per carry, so you get a very healthy difference there. And the conversions on third down, six for eight for UCLA, only and five for seven, which is pretty good for long. But of course, when you're not getting those long yards, you're in trouble. What do you think about that one? Well, I got to go with Joe Paterno. I got to tell you, he is, he's the kind of guy that when you put him in a situation where he can walk home with that national championship, I got to believe his troops are going to be there with everything they got and maybe then some. It's, yeah. like, it's like Bob Knight in basketball at, at Indiana. You don't want to give a coach of Paterno's ability a whole month to prepare. You certainly don't. And I understand they're going to keep that uh, schooner off the field this year. So <laughs> he, maybe he would rather have him take it out on the field this year. Hey, but that Barry Switzer's quarterback, that young freshman, he really makes things happen. And the Sooners have such an outstanding defense, big and fast. What a game. That should be, and that'll follow our activity from the Rose Bowl, a big bowl triple header on NBC. Chuck Long has missed on only two passes today. You can almost make a case for the point. He could be 16 for 16. He has the Big Ten record, completed 22 in a row against Indiana. That was two years ago. But, of course, the critical thing today, turnovers. Four fumbles by Harmon, and they have really put Iowa in a bad situation here in the first half. The timeout was Iowa's, 20 seconds left. from Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's a good story. Toomey, as you saw, wearing 40. He came to UCLA because he was watching the Rose Bowl game in 83 when UCLA beat Michigan. He played that position. He said, I'm built like him. I'll go out there. And here he is, a starter himself in the Rose Bowl as a sophomore. The end of the first half. UCLA by two touchdowns. You've got to believe UCLA is ecstatic at that score, and Iowa believes they're beating themselves. And a big halftime of activity scores highlights when we return.
Sometimes even Bigfoot's family gets tired of snow. To get away, they need the Nissan Stanza wagon, the only wagon with dual sliding doors. So it's easy in, easy out for all the little Bigfoots. And now the fuel-injected Stanza is available with four-wheel drive to get you through the snow or away from the snow. Nice trip. For sure. For dual sliding doors and two- or four-wheel drive, the name is Nissan. Driven 10 hours a week, this toy could use $500 worth of alkaline batteries. Because when an alkaline battery goes dead, you throw it away. This is a GE Rechargeable. When it goes dead, you don't throw it away. You do something revolutionary. You recharge it. So why spend $500 for alkaline batteries when you could spend less than $15 for two GE Rechargeable batteries and a charger? And once again, Happy New Year, everybody. Bob Costas in New York. Following the Rose Bowl, as you know, it's Penn State with their record of 11-0 against Oklahoma. The Sooners are 10-1, only an early season loss to Miami in Norman, Oklahoma, by the way, marring their record. The national championship could be at stake. Here's a preview from Don Crickey. Thank you, Bob. The tension is building here in Miami for this matchup of college football super teams. Number one, Penn State, and number two, Oklahoma with the national championship directly tied to the outcome. Penn State, as always, features outstanding defense, but the Nittany Lions also have some superb offensive players, like number 42, D.J. Dozier, a 210-pound power back with breakaway speed. Oklahoma's offense is centered around a freshman quarterback, Jamel Holloway, number four, a young man who's quarterbacked the Sooners seven times, and in those games, they've averaged almost 38 points and 350 yards a game rushing. Can the Penn State defense break the wishbone offense of Oklahoma? The national championship hinges on the outcome. This is Don Crickey in Miami. Now back to Bob Costas in New York. All right, Don, earlier today on NBC, Michigan finished 10-1-1, dropped Nebraska to 9-3 by winning the Fiesta Bowl 27-23. Let's take a look at highlights. It looked for a while as if it would be another bowl game nightmare for Bo Schembechler. The Wolverines trailed 14-3 at halftime. Two touchdowns by Doug DeBose of Nebraska. This one on a pass from McCathorn Clayton that covered six yards early in the second quarter. But in the third quarter, Nebraska self-destructed a couple of fumbles. They also suffered a blocked punt. Here is Jim Harbaugh scoring his second touchdown of the day for Michigan. Gave them the lead at 17-14. They scored 24 unanswered points in the third quarter. Built a 27-14 lead and then held on to win 27-23. Steve Taylor's desperation pass into the end zone. Intercepted by Garland Rivers. And the victory belongs to Michigan. Jamie Morris, the sophomore running back for the Wolverines. Younger brother of the Giants, Joe Morris. Had 156 yards on the day. DeBose carried 17 times for 99 yards for Nebraska. In the Cotton Bowl, the Aggies of Texas A&M making their first Cotton Bowl appearance in 18 years defeated Auburn 36-16 despite 129 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns by Heisman winner Bo Jackson. A&M was in front 12-7 in the second quarter when Pat Washington went to the air on this flip to Jackson and look what he does with it. Turns it into a 73-yard catch and run. Auburn has the lead at that point 13-12. We'll move ahead to the third quarter with A&M in front 15 to 13 at that point and Anthony Tony will build the lead to 21 13 on a 22 yard run eventually a field goal for Auburn will bring them to within 21 16 and they get second and goal at the two yard line and give it to Jackson three straight times and all three times A&M stops him that was the turning point in the game Texas A&M goes on to win at 36 16 A&M's quarterback Kevin Murray threw for almost 300 yards including a touchdown and in the Rose Bowl game you're watching now on NBC, four fumbles by Ronnie Harmon of Iowa, seven turnovers overall in the first half. Eric Ball carries the ball only five times for UCLA and scores on three of those five carries. The Bruins, the underdogs, leading 24-10 at the half. Let's go back to Pasadena. If you're just joining us, the big story, Eric Ball, the freshman runner for UCLA, three touchdowns. Ronnie Harmon, outstanding runner for Iowa, four fumbles. And it's a 24-10 UCLA lead at halftime. And on the field, the solid gold sound of the UCLA band director, Gordon Henderson, UCLA marching band director, and Dr. Thomas Lee is the director of bands. They're currently playing Doc Severson's composition, Spanish Dreams.
Brock Severson uh, has to be proud. I think some of those kids were staying up late and watching the Tonight Show. They had uh, the sound and the gesticulation. Next for the UCLA band, music from West Side Story. Nicknames. Let's uh, pay tribute to that fine conference. The Pacific Ten Conference, comprised of the universities of Southern California, Oregon, California, Washington State, Arizona, Oregon State, UCLA, Arizona State, Washington, and Stanford. Unparalleled in athletic achievement, and winner of more NCAA championships than any other conference. The Pacific 10 stretches from Arizona in the Southwest, north to California, Oregon, and Washington. Unsurpassed in academic excellence, Pac-10 schools have been providing the best in quality education for more than a century, offering degrees in agriculture, music, art, drama, and dance, as well as the sciences, including medicine, computer science, engineering, business and law. The Pacific 10 Conference, leading America into the 21st century. The Rose Bowl's a granddaddy, and this man is a giant in its history. In fact, his father helped build the Rose Bowl as we know it back in 1923. Lay Leishman saw his first Rose Bowl game in 1916. No man has contributed more to this day's events than Lay Leishman, and we're proud to be a part of it again, sir. Thank you, Dick, Ber Dick Enberg. Pasadena Tournament of Rose Association, the Big Ten, and the Pac-10 are pleased to present this plaque to NBC Sports for its 35 and more years of broadcasting and telecasting our Rose Bowl game. And I'm pleased to have Arthur Watson here today, president of NBC Sports, to accept it. Arthur, it's yours. Thank you, Lay. All of us at NBC and NBC Sports are very proud of our long association with the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association, the Pac-10 and the Big Ten Conferences. In anyone's lifetime, 35 years is a long association and a very special one. And I can assure you, our relationship is one of a kind. And we look forward to many, many more years being here at the Rose Bowl with you and your associates. Thank you, Leigh. We look forward to it as well. We return to the 72nd Rose Bowl edition after these messages from your local station. Thursday on Cheers, why is Norm crying in his beard? Stop torturing yourself. And us. And on night court, is Bull called it a night? Yeah, the circus is in town. Or is he just clowning around? Meet the gang. <laughs> and it's high speed action on Hill Street Blues. Thursday. No better way to start off a new year than in a brand new Chevrolet from your Austin Chevrolet dealers. And now to help you drive into the new year, your Austin Chevrolet dealers are offering 7.9% GMAC financing on selected models. Save on Nova, Cavalier, Celebrity, CNK 10 pickups, and El Camino. The selection is spectacular and the savings are tremendous. 7.9% GMAC financing only from your Austin Chevrolet dealers. See Capital Chevrolet, Chevrolet Country, and Henna Chevrolet now. Imagine any plan you can foresee. It can be reality. Republic Bank can do. Together, we make it happen. We make it happen. Together, there's nothing we can't do. Nothing we can't do. Together, we make it happen.
demurs tonight on News 36. Chance to order the 1986 Rose Bowl souvenir program for the 72nd Classic, matching Iowa and UCLA. Send a check or money order for $6 to Touchdown Publications, P.O. Box 882110, San Francisco, California, 94188-2110. This collector's edition contains in-depth scouting reports, a special review of past Rose Bowl games, and many other features. The price includes postage and handling. You'll receive your Rose Bowl program about six to eight weeks after the game. The Iowa Hawkeye band on the field at halftime of this Rose Bowl game. UCLA leads 24 to 10. The Big Ten, one of the nation's leading conferences. That has been true for more than a century. The Big Ten Conference completed its 90th season of football competition this fall with one of its most successful years. The conference won 80% of its non-league games, the best in the nation, and second best ever in Big Ten history. Over 4 million fans saw the Big Ten produce the nation's leader in rushing, passing efficiency, total offense, and receiving. The conference is now preparing for another exciting basketball season after league teams won over 80% of their December non-league battles. Big Ten women's sports are among the best in the nation with 12 conference championships now conducted on an annual basis. In addition, non-revenue sports like wrestling, hockey, and cross country are currently among the nation's best, but its nationally known academic reputation, which distinguishes Big Ten universities where tomorrow's leaders in research, technology, and higher education are ready to meet today's challenge. Now, Bill Stern, Mel Allen, Kurt Gowdy, Lindsey Nelson, the great sportscasters uh, of this century have had the honor of being in this broadcast booth.